1. And I'm going to begin reading from verse 1. Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to look at somebody and just tell them with all the bullions you have, I'm ready to produce. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody else and say, confirmation is by expression. Yeah, it's time to produce. I marvel many times at, at just Peter. Because when you read about Peter in the scriptures, you see braggadocious, sort of a bullion kind of fella. You know, he'd say things like, though all men forsake you, I'll be there with you. In response to Jesus telling him, that he is going to deny him thrice before the cock crows twice. Do I have that right? Good. And it's critical because many times we have to make fools out of ourselves before we realize or before we come to that place where God can use us. Because some of us have changed a little bit, cleaned up a little bit, got a little sanctified and got a little holy. And we act like it's something we achieve. And we treat other people as if they're still dirty, and as if they don't know the Lord. And and sometimes we act as if they ought to speak our tongues and, and act like they don't have it quite together because we got little revelation. And it's interesting that church folk can be, and I don't talk about church folk because I'm one of them, but it's interesting that we can be some of the ugliest people and some of the meanest people over something we received because we didn't really achieve. Mm -hmm. You didn't achieve God. I was listening to some people seeking God for the Holy Ghost and they were working so hard as if it was something they were going to work to get. But the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. And you don't work for a gift. A gift is not something you achieve. Uh, Peter's disposition is obviously one of feeling superior to others. And in many instances, his attitude before 
he denied Jesus was to make him so obnoxious that he could not be used by God. And there are many times when God has to humble someone in order to bring them to the point where he can use them because somehow in their humiliation they find a sensitivity for the people who are around them. So when I read his writings, I'm very inspired because what it says is that God can take someone who initially isn't qualified and he can qualify them through their own mistakes. He doesn't have to set up any particular classroom to qualify them. He just allows them to be who they are and pretty soon their own behavior will cause them to change. He begins here in the text, he begins with doctrine. And he always begins with doctrine. Paul is a master at that too. Because before he can admonish and exhort, he has to give a substratum or a platform by which he can exhort. And the way that he exhorts is by first presenting the doctrine of Jesus Christ and what he has done. And based upon what he has done, you have the ability to do certain things. If he didn't give you the power, then you could not operate in power. He has to first give you the power because you can't do anything of your own and get to him. He has to be the initiator. He has to be the supporter. So he ends up being the author and the finisher of your faith. So consequently, it is not your works that attracts him. It is your need that attracts him because he has to operate out of his fullness. And that's why he will let you know that his strength is made perfect in weakness. You do not achieve me. You just simply have to receive me. And this is where the doctrine begins. It begins with what he has done for us which qualifies us to do certain things within the parameter of our salvation simply because he began the whole process. So Peter now opens with doctrine and he points out that there are certain things that we have already received. And then he now moves to besides this. Uh, Vincent, he translates beside this, he says, it really should be for this cause because certain things have been done and because of what has been done, there are certain things you need to do. I, I don't need you to open it up. I don't need you to start the process. But once I start the process in your life, I need you to follow the process. Uh, let me just talk in general. You know, sometimes we understand where we want to go. And we need to know where we want to go if you're ever going to get to any destination. You can't leave and not have an idea of where it is you're going. Now we have the GPS systems and <clears throat> all you got to do is program into the system where you're going. That system can't take you anywhere if you don't know where you're going. Uh, now the question is, once you know where you're going and once you've programmed the system, the question now is, will you follow the process? Because oftentimes we know where we're going, we understand how to get there, we've strategized, but then we bail out because we couldn't deal with the process. You have to learn how to trust the process.
process no matter how difficult it seems no matter how rough the road is when God has a destiny in mind for you you are going to have to learn to trust the process it does not always mean that he's going to take you through uh, splendiferously wonderful places sometimes the process includes the wilderness mm -hmm. And sometimes the process includes a lot of pain. Uh, you look around and you see that many of your friends aren't here. Uh, a lot of folks are dead. I was down in Jamaica and I questioned uh, uh, about some of my friends and they told me so and so is dead, so and so is dead, so and so is dead and there was about three or four of my classmates who were no longer with us. Now when I was growing up uh, I was whipped. I mean, they whip me all the time. I mean, you know, you fly high or you fly low, uh, you're going to get a whooping today. And I mean, they just spanked me. You would, you'd call it child abuse. Well, all of my friends died on drugs and died being crazy. I got shot being in the wrong place. But they had a different destiny for me. So consequently, it wasn't always nice, uh -huh, but they had a process to process me. So now I'm living with memories of having been whooped. They're dead, mm -hmm, not having been whipped. See, every now and then God has to whip you in order to get you to the destiny he has ordained for you. And so he now tells us that for this cause, because of what he has done. Now Richardson concurs with Vincent and he adds this as a classical idiom for this cause. And what he says is in the text that there is a motivation. And the motivation is in two parts. The first is that there are generous promises. Many times we want the promises about how our life will be on earth. And oftentimes we have shrunk the scripture from the absoluteness of its eternal value. And we have simply modified it to let each one of us know that no matter what you're going through now, you're about to move to another level. And it suggests that the next level will not have with it some trials and tests. Uh, in case you have misunderstood, I would like to tell you today to clarify the matter that as long as you live on earth, you are going to have a struggle with one thing or another. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting a feeling in my spirit that somebody in here believes that there is going to be a time in their life when they will not have something that opposes them. Uh, get that out of your mind right now. I don't care what the preacher says, the earth will never be heaven. You are not going to leave heaven to go to heaven. This earth will never ever get to the place where something negative isn't going to go down around you. You have to understand that you can carry your burdens and still be a blessing to somebody else. And if you are going to wait until everything is blissful in your life before you can help somebody else then we can count you out because you have to learn how to handle your own 
own burdens and still lift the burden of other people you have got to learn how to pray for other people when you need somebody to pray for you you have got to learn and I have got to learn how to carry some people when we need somebody carrying us and I found out for everybody who knows that I need to help when I need help that my help coming from the hills uh, oh I'm telling you I'm telling you God has helped you to help others when you knew you needed some help yourself how many times have you rolled out of bed in the middle of the night and God moved you to pray for somebody when you were hoping somebody was praying for you and I've got words for you God was already monitoring the situation and he was giving you strength you didn't know you had had. Uh, the generous promises uh, in this context have nothing to do with earthly or material things and I don't think we ought to shrink the scriptures every time we see one to make it something that is earthly or mundane after you've got all the cars you want and all the houses you want uh, and after you've had all the vacations uh, we need God to work on us Oh, I feel it here. I need him to give me some generous promises about what I will become and how I will process his word, not just for material things. Uh, let me just go over this again. How much of the time we have already had things before we ever came to God. It wasn't salvation that put a car in your garage. Uh, it wasn't salvation. It was that man you were with that you weren't married to who was married to somebody else since you all want to mess with me that put the car in your garage. Mm, all right now can I preach now in that middle? You all go act like you all been sitting up in church all your life and act like it wasn't salvation that put clothes on your back. You had clothes before you came to the house of God. So why all of a sudden everything in church has to relate to a life down here? When do we ever get to the place where we say to God, all right now Lord I have enough pretty clothes but I'm ugly on the inside. I have enough makeup on the outside but I need to be made up on the inside I have enough money Lord what I need is some more qualities that make me feel good about myself I want to look not in the mirror of the physical but I want to look in the mirror of the spiritual and I want to be what you would have me to be if I don't have a dime when are we going to stop making the church a place of material and make it a place of spiritual value I need some generous promises about me because oftentimes my sadness and my depression is not about what I don't have materially it's what I don't have spiritually uh, and, and it is a burden because it's something that goes with you no matter what level of finance uh, you have I mean you can be rotten rich I remember uh, I think it was Christina Onassis now who was as rich as the Onassises. I mean, she was a billionaire and at 37, she committed suicide. Uh, when Williams committed suicide, the comedian, somebody had the unmitigated gall and audacity to say to me, how could he kill himself with all that money? I said, man, what are you? Where is your mind? 
to money doesn't stop a depression uh, having big houses and boats don't stop being sad uh, complicated psychological systems are not straightened out because of finance you can have all the money in the world and still blow your brains out the thing we ought to give God thanks for is we can be broke and still be happy because it ain't got nothing to do with what's in church it's a critical thing here now because I need some generous promises about me after I have eaten all the food I can eat and after I have driven all the cars I can drive I need him to fix me and so I need him to promise me Lord promise me that I'm not going to be this mean person next year that I am right now promise me that I don't have cursing on my lips I, I, I cuss people out so fast Lord clean up my mouth can you do that for me Lord promise me that my fists won't go into somebody's jaw uh, help me to be able to take a few things without crying all night I want to be delivered from people help me to operate within your will and not let anybody stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do give me some promises it's critical then the second motivation is partakers of the divine nature because now he has afforded me the opportunity to partake of his nature and because of that now he tells me that I want you to bring some things along and the first is I need you to give I need you to give and it's in giving in this particular text and it simply means three words to bring into alongside and what he wants me to do now is to bring some things alongside of what he has already done done for my life and that's why he said beside this I need you to understand that you have some gifts but I want you to have something along with the gift and that is the character that sustains the gift there are many gifted people that we can't use because they have no character uh, I feel the Holy Spirit here oh yes there are many people who are extraordinarily gifted but we don't want them in our space because we can't trust them you see your gift can put you in the lights and your character can put you in the basement because you need character especially when you're really gifted because your giftedness can make a fool out of you if you don't have any character so sometimes God puts a hold on your gift in order to build your character so that when your gift raise you up your character won't embarrass you some people need to be hidden until they can get their character together I might as well I'm preaching to myself excuse me some people need to be hidden until they get their character together I'm not talking to you alone I'm talking to me because many times you say to God I wish I wasn't so popular you see everybody wants limelight but everybody's not ready for limelight because in this city they'll get you going up but they sure will get you coming down they'll talk about you with all kinds of compliments while you're on the way up and please don't make a lot of enemies while you're on the way up because they'll be waiting for you when you're coming uh, give somebody a high five and say 
that surely is the truth mm -hmm. and so now Bunyan says the soul of religion is the practical side it is not something that you cloak it is something that you express and so he says now I want you to give diligence from the Greek spode and the etymological root here of spadazo is to make haste I diligence here means to make haste get in a hurry for this be eager to do one's best is what it says to take care to exert oneself that you must do diligence here because you have some precious items we teach our kids to be diligent particularly when they're crossing the street and I want to ask why do we teach them they told me look to the left look to the right and then look back to the left before you cross the street now the diligence is simply because there is a precious item that's crossing the street and because the item that's precious is your life you have to be diligent about getting from one side to the other if your life isn't worth anything then you just run out into the street but because my life is valuable I have to make sure that things are carefully plotted out so that I don't lose it we're on our way to the airport and the driver is trying to make up some time and I got to the point where I told him simply this I'd rather be late than dead so now just slow this thing down and not try to retrieve your 45 minutes out of an hour and a half just admit you messed up got me in this car for a 45 minute drive that's an hour and a half so stop trying to make this hour and a half drive 45 minutes I want to get there I'd rather be late than to be dead or sitting up in uh, Cedar Sinai New York sick and broken up you see you got something precious up in here and if your life isn't precious to you mine is to me so I want you to be diligent oh, I feel like preaching now the diligence now you have to note verse 2 and verse 3 because what we've got here is divine provisions what we've got is divine provision oh lord and uh, they got divine provision and enablement of an inner dynamic and when you talk about inner dynamic you talk about who you are and what god has placed in you i wish i could get each one of us to understand that the most valuable thing around Around you is you it is not what you have it is who you are and your value must not be minimized or marginalized because of what you don't have nobody around you is better than you based on what they have I wish somebody to understand it and can I can I just do it another way and it starts really with how you view other people if you're intimidated by someone simply because they have money then that tells me how you would treat somebody if you had money because if you think money elevates folk you make a big mistake what the Bible's trying to teach us is that nothing on the outside elevates you but everything that on the inside makes you who you are you don't win from the outside and you don't win because of what's outside you win because of what's inside and if you're looking to be powerful don't look outside stir the gift that's inside 
and you will have victory and power uh, God help me today and so the divine nature which impels to a holy life giving both the desire and power to do God's will that has to come from the inside because everything on the outside becomes a distraction if it's not an expression of what's on the inside uh, somebody ought to tweet that maybe I ought to go that again uh, if it's on the outside and it didn't derive from the inside it becomes a distraction and what we have done is we have focused our lives so much on the outside that we have forgotten the adorning of the inside you are beautiful if you have no makeup on well I don't want you to see me without my makeup the devil is a liar I want to see your jaw I want to see how pleasant I want to see your smile that comes I want to see your kindness uh, you can dress up on you want to on the outside and so what you do you look good on the outside baby but what do you have on the end? oh Jesus oh help me Lord oh God you know the outside is all right but what do you have on the inside can I take it further why you want to attract anybody anyway if you ain't got nothing to attract them to security and so our responsibility then is to seeing that in verse 5 to 7 our responsibility is to see that the various Christian virtues are included in our lives we have become just too American in the presentation of the gospel and the gospel has become extremely capitalistic so now it's about things and not about about the quality of who we are but the divine nature is not an automatic pilot that just will produce a Christian life regardless of the believers attitude uh -huh. the believer must want what God wants for their life so the divine nature will always produce but it works better when the believer cooperates by my willingness to live a life pleasing to God I want to please God that's what you got to say to yourself I want God to break some of these habits that I have that I don't like myself and when I begin to worry about what I do then it's time to change it because that's how God begins the process I don't know have you ever been into something that you thought you would never get out of I don't know have you ever been entangled with someone you thought you'd never get over I don't know have you ever been bound in certain habits that you were sick of yourself oh, I want to talk to some real people uh, maybe I need a chair I want to talk about habits that when you get into it you say to yourself I'm not going too far and yet still even though you say you're not going too far you go too far and then when you have gone too far then you turn around and swear to yourself thank you that I'll never do this again but I'll never do it again till the next time and then you're back into it again I don't know if it's the ganja I don't know if it's the alcohol I don't know if it's that woman I don't know if it's that man I don't know if it's the club I don't know what it is but it's something in our lives that's got a hold on us and when you get to the place where you're sick of it God has already started the process to deliver you from it because you'll never be delivered until you get sick of it oh, I feel like shouting in here uh, give me a little help on these monitors sound man it's critical to understand this uh, that stepping 
out on faith is number two and living the life dependent on the new life implanted by God thanks this is not to be done lackadaisically but it's intense effort I want to add to what I have I want to grow in God I don't want to be here 20 years and still crying over the same stuff I don't want to be here 10 years and still fighting the same struggle if it's a struggle let it be a new one but I'm sick and tired of fighting the old struggle I want to get over something give somebody a high five for the first time and say neighbor I need to get over something I got a list of stuff I need to get over and I need to start marking them off I'm over you now I'm over this now I'm over that now and I'm moving on I feel a breakthrough coming he uses this ad and he uses ad from the Greek word chorus and what it suggests here is to bear the expense of the chorus and that's the bearing the expense the state selected someone to defray all the expenses for training and maintenance uh, struck and he says and I quote it was a duty that prompted to lavishness in execution hence to supply cost for any purpose unquote so thus it provides more than barely demanded I don't want to serve God on the fringe I want to serve him above what is demanded it's like having a job and you just do the minimal and you just stay on the edge I'm not doing any more than I have to well God has been too good to me for me not to give him every effort that I have he's brought me out of too much man I feel like preaching I thought I'd be tired but I feel like lifting him up you see how good he is you see how good he is I can't approach this thing lackadaisical when God has been so good I can't act like I want to give him the minimum when he has given me the best I can't give him a little tip when I ought to tithe I can't give him a little lip when I ought to praise I gotta give him his due he's been too good to me not for me to lavish it on him give somebody a high five and say no matter how well I'm dressed when it comes to praising God I'm gonna lavish it on him if I have to break my heels if I have to tear up my suit when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul I cry out somebody say hallelujah my God for saving me it's to supply in copious measure y'all rest a little bit to provide beyond the need to render more than generously so I want to add to faith I want to add virtue to faith I don't want to sit around in the house and act like I'm so sanctified and yet I treat people like a piece of trash can I talk to you a minute you're jumping and shouting and dancing and the Holy Ghost is for more than being in church it's supposed to bring you an image of virtue when you walk in a room you ought to light it up I feel like preaching here because your spirit is a glow and your spirit is beautiful and then your spirit is so wonderful that you make some folk mad just by showing up I feel the Holy Spirit am I talking to somebody here some folk just can't stand you because you're carrying some joy with you and they want you to come in like you messed up I don't have faith to be messed up I have faith to overcome I have faith to have victory don't look at my circumstance and think I can't make it because God has been so good to me that 
I've got to come in bouncing. I've got to come in rejoicing. I've got to come in helping everybody. Well, you just think you can help everybody. I'll help as many folk as I can because I've added to my faith virtue. Then I've got to have patience. I've got to have hoopamone because with my virtue, he sends knowledge and with my knowledge he sends temperance and then he gives me patience so I can handle myself can I preach like I feel it give some money high five and say neighbor if you stick with the process have a little patience because everything is going to work out fine and when I submit to the divine will then godliness has got to come because godliness is from two words and it means will worship give some money high five for the fourth time and say godliness means will worship I worship him in spirit and in truth so when God sees me coming he sees a worshiper not just a praiser because anybody can praise God but anybody can worship God because you gotta worship him in spirit and in truth I might as well have a little church give some money high five for the fifth time and say I recognize the power of God and I'm willing to worship he says if this is in you this is what you possess and if you are bound in it I feel like preaching shake somebody's hand and say neighbor I've abounded in money I've abounded in friends but my money got funny and my friends walked away I've invested in everybody but I haven't invested in my spirit I invested in my body I invested in my clothes I invested in my house I invested in people and I got no returns but I dare you to invest in your spirit invest in your attitude invest in who you are before God and I'll hear him tell you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added give some money high five for the second to the last time and said neighbor I finally learned who to go after if I go after a man he can't give you God if I go after a woman she can't give me God I go after a house the house can't give me God I go after a car it can't give me God but if I go after God he can give me a woman if I go after God he can give me a house if I go after God he can give me a car if I go after God he can give me a job pull on your neighbor say who do we go after tell your neighbor we go after God we go after God we go after power we go after anointing we go after joy we go after victory we go after the Holy Ghost and victory shall shall be mine I come to tell you I'm a better person I'm a better person give somebody a high five for the last time and the neighbor express the beauty that's in you let it out let it out let it out let it out I'm getting ready to close 
I'm getting ready to close. Give some money high five for the next service and say, neighbor, ready or not, here I come. I've been hiding the best part of me, but I'm impregnated with goodness. I'm impregnated with joy, and it's getting ready to burst out of here like a volcano. Ready or not, here I come. Some folk ain't ready for the new you. Some folk ain't ready for the better you. Some folk ain't ready for the more powerful you. But ready or not, here I come with power in my hand. Ready or not. discovered you know what I you know what I discovered that I just preached a health wealth and prosperity message huh I just preached health wealth and prosperity I'm healthy spiritually. I'm wealthy spiritually. So I got to prosper. It ain't in my car. It ain't in my house. It's in my heart. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. You're looking at more wealth than you can handle. You're looking at it. What are you talking about? This is the face of wealth. Look at him and say, this is the face of wealth. This is the face of wealth. This is the face of health. This is the face of prosperity. It ain't in what you drive. It's in who you are. 